Hey guys, I was here bringing you another video, this time playing Ranked Fives on Dr. Mundo, and this is a special Ranked Fives game, as you're actually against Gaming Gear EU, apart from one member. Now, if you don't know who Gaming Gear EU is, they are a team that actually qualified and went to World Championship League of Legends. They've played against Faker, they've played against all the likes of our favourite professionals, and they didn't win any games, but they, you know, they qualified, so it's something. Uh, so this game is a fairly long one, it's 30, about 40 minutes long, so I'll be speeding it up in places that I can. And as you can see, what we just did there is very basic, walk into their red buff as a unit and just get a ward down. This just confirms where they're going to be starting, what buff they're going to be doing, as it's something you always like to know. Now this, one thing I do have to note about this game, this is actually before the minor trinket changes although they don't affect it in this game you know a normal game back in this patch may have as obviously trinkets now you can use them from 30 seconds into a game where on this patch it was a lot later you're talking you know two minutes in so anyway it's a dr mundo versus renekton lane this lane obviously is very very heavily favored into renekton in the early game but eventually mundo will outscale the renekton I'm quite a fan of Dr. Mundo, because even if you don't do amazing in lane, you should do quite well in the later stages of the game. You st should still be quite a tanky beast, and you should be able to soak up quite a bit of damage for your team. So in the early stages of this game, my main goal is just try to CS as much as possible and survive. But honestly, if I do die in this lane, it's not going to be a massive issue for me. You know, It's a lane that's already in his favour. It's, it's inevitable that... Renekton is going to win this early stage. So if I do die, it's a bit of a bummer, but hey ho, other thing, other bad things can happen if he just totally denies me from CS. So I'm going to speed up the game just in the early stages of the game. All of this is is just farming, farming, farming. You can see that he is building up a little bit of a CS lead, but that's mainly because he's just pushing it into my tower, and I do have to be careful of the level two, level three all in by him. Now my starting item I have opted for is a cloth armor with five potions. This should help me survive a little bit longer. But as well as, it doesn't give me a lot of power in lane, so still, I have to be quite careful. So I've just hit level 3, get all my spells in there, this will help me farm a little bit more. Uh, and just see what I can do, honestly, it's again, just a farming game, managing to survive. And that's a lot of what top lane is, you know, top lane, it's a weird lane. I'd say it's one of the weirdest lanes in the game right now, in the fact that it's the most snowbally lane you know if you're a, if you get behind in bottom lane if you're like an ad carry you have a support to help you try to get back into it in mid lane you're in the mid you you're the best you know the most opportunistic opportunistic lane in the game people can come roam to your lane from anywhere so bot lane could come roam and help you the jungler obviously and even top laners can come and help. You're in just a great position to get help from in the mid lane. Top lane, you're on an island. I'm afraid if you get behind, you're most likely going to be more or less by yourself getting behind. Uh, there are certain teams out there that focus very heavily into the top lane to try and just secure that lead. Uh, a good example of that is Cloud9. You know, Meteor spends a lot of time early in the jungle or in the top lane. Secure the lane for balls because the way they probably see it, if you get your top lane ahead, you're going to deny the enemy top laner for one and your top lane is going to have free farm. That's kind of how it works in the top lane if you do get ahead. So right now I'm only 5 CS down. Honestly, that's fine with me. You know, it's... As I said, I am going to be behind, but I won't go on about that a lot. You know, this is a lane that I can win, and I'm going to be trying to win as best that I can. You have to remember that the enemy team we're against, if you... As I, I said, there are Gaming Gear U, and all of these... I think four of them were Challenger, um, and the, this Renekton was, I believe, Diamond 1. Um, with a, I think he even mained Renekton, it kind of rings a bell. But yeah, the, these, this team that we're playing is of a high quality, you know. One thing I do have to say I like, uh, and Renekton does go on me, and that will probably force me to back, I would imagine. One thing, as I was saying, I like and I enjoy when I play Ranked Fives is the quality of players we do play against. I really, really enjoy playing against, you know, I played against Movert's team, I play against, you know, a number of different teams. Now, Renekton is looking to maybe jump on me under tower here. Now, I do have heal, so it would have to be very very risky of Renekton to go on, on me right now. I still haven't burnt it. I'm just going to try and heal up a little bit and then probably going to return back into the fight now I think of it. Duff is doing quite a bit of damage on Xin Zhao. I'm running into the area trying to see if I could get Renekton just to kind of turn, maybe try to go aggressive on me. I could bait him with my heal but he decides against it. So I'll just do a little bit more farming than I will back for myself. I'll probably just pick up that one and these 
maybe two or three, and then go back and buy any second now, and I'll speed up the game in that process as well. So yeah, Mundo is a fun champion. Lane phase, you know, he's not the most fun. Lane phase, you know, you're just relying on cleavers hitting, you're relying on just sustaining and surviving. You've seen in LCS probably quite a bit if you watch it, that someone like Dyrus, who plays quite a bit of Mundo, you get focused heavily pre-6. And even at level 6, you get focused because a Mundo is very easy to dive. You know, pre-6, he's not going to be doing much under tower. He's got no form of CC apart from a slow. You've got to be really careful. Now, you can see Renekton's damage is starting to pile up right now. It won't affect me as much when I have level 6 because every single time he kind of does that, I'll just run back, pop my ultimate, and then I'll manage to sustain up. So I might pop it here. I would imagine that I'd pop it, you know, anytime soon. If he does any form of damage to me in the near future, then he probably will. But this Renekton is looking aggressive. This Renekton probably wants to get a kill on me because that's what this lane is about for him. If he doesn't snowball it, if he doesn't get ahead, then he's actually going to be in trouble later on. And that is why Renekton is kind of falling off. You know, you see him played every now and then. And the main time you see him, he's played as more of a tank that he just runs into everybody and just tanks everything up. But he is falling off. Now, the reason that, because he really does fall completely off compared to other champions. Now, yes, he has an incredibly strong lane phase. But the game nowadays isn't built for early game. The game meta is actually built towards late game. Now, there's engage going down bot lane. There's a bit of trading going on. If we just pan over, you can see that the advantage is actually going to the enemy team right now. But they have to be very, very careful. Fire is doing some damage, decent damage to them. But Veil does go down. So the enemy do have an advantage right now, as you'd probably imagine being gaming at EU. But we're going to hold on. We're going to stay confident in this game and even try and, you know, go for the win. That's what you do when you're playing in ranked fives any single match any team you're against you never bring your head down or you try to anyway and that is one bad thing about lol nexus you know if you lol nexus them and it does happen a lot oh they're full challenger okay that kind of does mess with your mentality sometimes and it shouldn't but sometimes it does but as i was saying renekton has fallen off a little bit because if you compare renekton to i don't know Jax. He's going to win the early game, more or less, and then late game, what the hell is a Renekton going to do to a Jax? There's literally nothing he can do. Same goes with a Shivana. Renekton can't deal with Shivana. He can't deal with the Mundo. He just can't deal with stuff unless he literally gets ahead in lane by a lot, and then will just outpower them just sheer of items that he has against them um, in, you know, well, you know, in a certain time period. If it does literally go to 50 minutes, it would probably go against Renekton's favour. So I'm farming okay, you know, Renekton again, he has picked up a CS lead, but it's fine with me. Uh, eventually, I will probably be able to kill this Renekton one-on-one. -on -one. I haven't popped my ultimate yet because uh, staying around half health is good enough for me. I do have that heal, so if I pop the heal, that will bring me to, you know, higher a little bit more. But you want to stay between half and probably full health uh, in any given lane. Your top lane, I'd say a health advantage is a big, big advantage. Bigger than a lot of people actually think. You know, a health advantage is more of a mental thing than anything. That, you know, you have to imagine League of Legends is a very mental game. You know, will I go for that dive? Will I do this? Will I do that? It's very mental in how you play it. Uh, it's very emotion dependent and all that type of thing. Now, you can see my damage is starting to build up. I pop my ultimate and this may force Renekton to go fairly aggressive on me soon. I don't want to run into all minions. He still has his ultimate, which will be doing a lot of damage. And then, you know, he, his... Just general Qs, Ws, everything like that would do da uh, damage to me, as well as his E will be doing armor shred. Now, if we go into what items I built, what you know, what's my build order, etc., you can see I have actually opted for a very early ninja tabby. This is just because I have a little bit of extra speed to run away from him, as well as just a little bit of armor, a little bit less auto attack damage, just to help me, you know, sustain that a little bit more. Now I've gone back and bought, I picked up my giant spell award and a couple of health potions. This will actually help me. Simply just survive, be a bit even more tanky, be annoying to this Renekton, and scale into the late game. So I would imagine that will be building into a Sunfire cape and just be as tanky as possible, you know. I'm not a tank player, if you know, you said, Huz, what type of player are you? I'd never define myself as a tank player. I can't say that I enjoy and I love playing tanks, you know. I'm, I am looking forward to the meta in top lane when it swaps back to maybe a little bit more damagey, a little bit more assassin. I am looking forward to that moment. Now Renekton again, he's just doing a little bit of damage, he's playing it really well, he's just jumping in, doing damage, jumping out, that's all he needs to do, that's all he needs to do to kind of keep me down in this lane, and he's doing it well, you know, he's playing it very well, but it doesn't really deny me as a Mundo fully, um, because you know, I just run back, get that health, and then simply just go back and against him. 
Now again, there's an engage going in bot lane. It is actually going in favour of the misfortune lane there. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, they're playing very well. You know, the uh, enemy in the lane phase... That's what probably the biggest thing I'll say to you. If you're in a rank 5s team yourself, or if you're in solo queue, or anything like that, now you can see Renekton just quickly is going fairly aggressive on me. He may look for a dive we'll have to see in the upcoming moments. I'll, I'll go back onto what I was saying in a second. So any second he may jump on me. Yep, he's going Dominus. He's going to go on me. He flashes. There's my heal. He completely forgets I have heal for some reason. And this will be a free kill for Mundo. So thank you very much for that dive, Renekton. That's exactly what you want to do. As a Mundo, you want to bait the dive. Use your heal under the tower. And then what's a Renekton going to do against you? He's simply just going to die. So that's going to give me a massive advantage in this lane. You know, I haven't caught up in CS yet, but that will probably put me over the edge in gold, I would imagine. So yes, I am a hard in 100 gold on him right now, and that's, you know, going to help a lot. Now the enemy T, or uh, we're actually looking for Dragon right now. It was a good opportunity, all the enemy based after they actually got some kills. And again, that is probably going to further my gold lead into the top lane. You can see that the gold in between both teams it's fairly close, you know, there's only a thousand gold in between it, that's not a lot in the 12 minute mark, you know, we'd like to be closer, but it's not a lot. Now the big difference in this game, gold wise, is the jungle. Right now in the jungle, if you notice the CS etc, Shivana has been focusing, focusing, focusing on farming pretty much all pre-6, you know, that's all she was doing, you didn't see Shivana come top at 3 minutes or anything like that, she's got 71. Duff has been focusing a little bit more lanes, not being amazingly successful, but has got 34 CS. So that is where the big, big advantage has kind of happened in this game. Now, I did go back and buy, but brought myself a chain vest and a ruby crystal. Now, you can see this is the point that I'm kind of just damage testing. I like doing this every now and then while he throws a really weird ward, but I like damage testing when I get a new big item. You know, I'm fairly new to the top lane still, and this is something that a veteran top lane player will not need to do. I don't know how much damage I can take as a Mundo when I have these items where a veteran top laner who plays Mundo will know without damage testing. And that's just something I have to do every now and then just to kind of go, right, he does that amount of damage in a burst. I can take that. I could do more to him, etc. Um, but as I can't really remember the point that I was making before or the engage and everything, the dive. Um, hmm... Yeah, I can't remember that. We'll just move on anyway. Yeah, but Munda will overtake this lane in damage. Now, I remember, right, if you're playing solo queue, if you're playing chat, um, ranked fives, etc., and you go on LOL Nexus and you see the enemy team is higher rated than you, you, you get a bit demoralized. The biggest and best thing you can do is not to lose the lane phase. And that's where challenger teams win their games. That is what the biggest difference is when you're actually a challenger team versus, say, my team that's Diamond. They will win their lanes because they're just a better solo player than their opponent. You know, this Renekton is probably a better top laner than me. But if I can just hold my own in this top lane, don't let him snowball, then we're looking fairly strong. Because then we're going into team play. And a team play is a totally different ball game than, you know, ranked fives. Now, I'd say... The thing with top lane that is different about the other roles in rank fives, top lane you're basically playing solo queue to certain limits, or that's my perception of it anyway, the way I feel, is that top lane you're not going to get a lot of help from your jungler, you, or if you do, you're either going to get your jungler um, camping for you, or you're going to have the enemy jungler camping you, that's very solo queue like, but normally you're left by your own. Normally, you cannot help your team whatsoever. Yes, we have TP nowadays in, in pretty much every single champion, but you're not going to TP to bot lane pre, I don't know, level 6, because that's just going to hurt you too much in lane, as I pop my ultimate again. And this is exactly what you just have to keep doing as Mundo. It annoys the hell out of the enemy, and it just keeps you a little bit of a lead. It keeps you more into this lane than you should be. Uh, just getting that full health back, basically back again instantly. Um, but yeah, just don't lose your lane, because if you lose your lane, yeah, then the game's pretty much over. If you don't lose your lane, then it goes to the team fight stage, then it goes to rotations, then it goes to objectives, and anybody can win that. You know, this, we do it all the time, we play challenger teams, and if we just get past that lane phase, then we're looking fairly strong. And if we do lose versus them teams, it is because we lost the lane phase. Uh, but anyway, Renekton has decided to go back and buy, or maybe he'll stop it. Uh, no, he doesn't. So he does give me a free wave, which is fairly nice of him. But he will TP straight back, because that's what the TP is used for. A lot of people may say, you know, why is TP used nowadays? Why is Ignite gone? Why is, like, heal not massively used or whatever? Simple answer, because TP is just amazing late game. 
And again, that is what the game is built for right now. As a, there's a, a big engage going in bot lane that is again going in the advantage of the enemy team. They seem to basically be focusing the bot lane right now. You know, the Shivana is 202, and I believe both of them are in the mid, uh, in the bot lane. MF is 412. So yeah, I think all of the kills that Shivana and MF, you know, obviously has is in the bot lane. So what I'm gonna do right now, I sometimes do this, and I'm still learning if it's good or bad. I'm actually going to just run to lane as Soraka does get killed by Oriana Solo, which is unfortunate. But I'm just going to run to the lane, and sometimes it's good to do this, sometimes it's bad. If I can save the turret, it's, then it's fairly good. The turret may go down, which is unfortunate. It does go down, so maybe it was, it was not worth it. I still have my TP up, and that's my point. Sometimes I simply just run back to lane, because I like having my TP not on cooldown, because, you know, it could be useful eventually. Now, Renekton is looking for a little fight against me. Honestly, this fight is not going to go in his favour. It really is not going to go in his favour, so I'm just going to try and kill him. I'm going to do my best to kill him, see if I can land that, and he's flashed as well, and bam, get a kill on him. So, I do get a kill for his tower taken, it's probably not worth in the grand scheme of things, because, you know, it's a tower in the day, but now I'm going to try and go for his. But, I think there was a call saying, you know, careful of somebody, so that's why I may have started to back off, but yeah. Go back into the turret, going to try and pick it up while Renekton is out of lane. If I get this, then yeah, though, that kill was definitely worth it as that's a free kill for me, and we both trade towers. But you can see Mundo now is starting to get a bit stronger. You can see Mundo is starting to build his strength, starting to get really tanky too. So that will probably help me in the long run of this game. The turret should go down. There is a TP, unfortunately, on a minion. So Renekton, I don't know, he probably could have TP to the tower there. You know, the TP to the tower probably would have scared me off enough, and I think his only uh, thing that he was scared of is if... He tp to the turret, and I just went for the turret. If I killed the turret before his TP went down, then I would have cancelled it. I would have got his cancellation on his teleport, and that would have leaded a really good situation for us. But I still have mine up, so if I need to use mine, I will. But again, we are doing... You know, in we're doing okay. You know, the main reason, the main area of difference right now is the bot lane. You know, that, that is the hard part. And as I said, this is a challenger team that went to Worlds. So they will probably push an advantage early. And the advantage they're pushing is the bot lane. They are focusing bot lane fairly heavily. They've got a successful gank here and there. So they're just going at it, going at it, going at it. Now, Renekton has actually rotated mid. And maybe he's going to Dragon. So this is where the first major team fight may happen. Uh, now, our team comp... I haven't really not, like said a lot about the team comps right now. But the team comps that we're running and the one we are running right now is basically a team comp of annoyance. There is a little engage going bot lane. They do actually get quite them uh, get them quite low. Um, but not low enough to you know pick up a kill. But our team is a late game team, pure and simple. It's for a Soraka to keep everybody high health, uh, a Mundo not to die while their engage comes down in bot lane. Hopefully they can pick up a kill. They do, and that will give us dragon pressure, hopefully. Mundo, as me, is actually zoning two people right now, so we're going to look for the dragon, but we're actually probably going to just look to turn the fight. We're probably just going to ignore the dragon and look for the kill. So there's the call. Duff flashes onto the Orianna. Then we all just focus pure and simple onto the Renekton. The ball is probably just going to get a very nice ultimate, I'd say, any second. Bam, there you go. They do actually just only go for me and Duff, so... As all things considered, they only get the tanks. And I'm going to try and do my best to try and just pick up a couple more kills. But I should probably go down. I do to the Oriana. As she's, you know, very strong. She even ignited me in that fight. But that is a fight for us. We came out on top of that. We got in the, you know, everything. You know, we got one kill in bots. We got four kills. And we only lost two. So in everything, that was a big advantage for us. As well as Oriana, for some reason, didn't decide to back. So there's another get another free kill for us. Bam, we're in this game again. Although we're not catch, you know, caught up in gold 100%, we're even on kills. And trust me, kills is a big morale boost. If you're saying, okay, we were down a lot in kills, now we're even. Let's do this, let's go. And that's kind of what happens. That's exactly what happens in this game. We get pumped again, you know. When you're losing the lane phase, you get a little bit down. Your head goes down, you're like, ugh, really? But now when you're kind of winning the the, the team stages of the game... Your morale goes really up because you're playing with your teammates, you're playing with your friends, and you just feel good. And, uh, it, you know, that's a, it's a good feeling. So I'm going to return to the top lane. You can see how tanky I'm actually getting as Mundo right now. I've got my Sunfire Ninja Tabby, got my Kingle Gem, and got my um, the build for the Spectral Cow. Now, the reason I've come top lane is basically just to be annoying. Um, the dragon is still up. I've still got TP. I'm going to go for this turret, which was going to be for free. And bam, we're going to pick that up. And then I can TP to dragon if they need me. So any second, 
Bam, there's my TP, and we're going to go in for a kill really nicely on our ult. They try to bubble me, and that's not going to work. Sorry for you guys. And we may pick up the kill. Unfortunately, we don't because she used Blade and King, but gives us Dragon Pressure. We may pick this up also. So, yeah, this is what we're doing. This is how we're going to try and win this game. It's just pure team play. So they are actually looking fairly aggressive for this still, which I'm not sure why. You know, they're in a not very good position. MF is totally split for the team, which I think is a mistake. She uses ultimate way too early. Mundo with front line. Going to try and slow as many people as possible. Nice Orianna ult, but not good enough. And I pick up one kill, and I'm going to go for the Shivana any second. And bam, double kill for me. That makes me 5-1-2. Going to go for the turret as well. You know, turret's not really going to affect me at this stage of the game. And pure and simple, bam. And that will probably also give us pressure for this tier 2 in mid as well. So you can see we are starting to turn the game. We have actually taken the gold lead and we're going to just definitely do take the gold lead due to this tower. There we go, we're a thousand gold ahead. So our team comp is a fairly weak lane phase comp. We're going to admit that, you know, our, our team, you know, if we look into the lanes, Renekton versus Mundo, that goes in Renekton's favour. Orianna versus Soraka, that probably goes into Orianna's favour in most player matchups. Bot lane, MF Nami is a lot more aggressive than a Leona Lucian because a Nami, a very good Nami, can stop a Leona. It's, you know, if, if they're really good, which I believe this Nami was, then yeah, I think then that goes into their favour. And then Jungle, Jungle should actually go into our favour early, but this Shivana played it really well. She farmed and her team didn't give anything early on against us. I get bubbled. Of all people, I'm the one to get bubbled and have to run a little bit, which is annoying. But yeah, we... we Play it fairly well. We didn't get we didn't get too far behind that the game was over in lane phase. Yeah, we did get behind, but not too far. Now the enemy are looking to do Baron right now. My team say just go and check it, Huz. You're really tanky, so I'm just going to be again annoying. That's my job. Hi, I'm Huz. I'm the annoying one. So I'm just going to do it as much as I can. Pop my ultimate just to run around a little bit quicker. We know that they're doing it. So I'm just going to look like I'm going fairly aggressive and then totally back off. So this right now you'd think I'm going to die for what I do. My team is flanking the back. I'm just going to run away. And this may be able to give us an advantage onto the Baron. But at least stops us. You know, stops them. They, we, you know, we got some of their summoner spells. We got, you know, some you know bits and bobs there here and there. And it was really good. So... I managed to stop that basically by myself while my team flanked or just came in from this direction. So really, really good. Now, I really wanted to back at this point, but my team wanted to continue fighting. So I do return to try and just help out a little bit. MF ult does come down. I'm maybe looking for a fight. Not really sure. My team is still in the area. And there we go. They move into a bad position. Going to pounce on that straight away. And do what I can. So I do go down. But this still should be an advantage for me and my team. Lucian should pick up some kills. And Soraka will be able to finish off the rest hopefully. So uh, Renekton is in the background. But I'm not sure he'll be able to do anything at this point. So there we go. Another kill. So yeah. He, he's not going to be able to do anything. If he tries to do anything. He will simply die for it. So yeah. Really good play. Again building advantages. That all, stopped, uh, that all stemmed from Baron. So just remember, don't be like Dignitas. Don't throw things at Baron. You know, <laughs> it's not worth it. You know, Baron a lot of the time. You have to remember the actual buff itself. Yeah, it's a nice stat boost, but it's not worth getting aced. That's the thing, uh, which a lot of people forget. Now, if we look into the CS of comparing everybody, they are ahead. They are ahead in CS, and that's where I'd say the challenger element comes in. They are better individual players than us. That is just obvious. We're not going to pretend that we're individually better than these guys. They're really, really good. The thing that we're going to try and beat them in, and that's what we're succeeding in, is team play. We've played, you know, us and the team right now, we've played with each other for quite some months. And we kind of know each other now. And although we've been going through role swaps, we still kind of know... You know, our weakest point in ranked fives is our lane phase. You know, occasionally I'll lose top lane, or I lose top lane more than I probably win it right now. Although, you know, I don't hemorrhage. You know, if I lose top lane, I'm not that far behind of my opponent. Where, you know, in bot lane, you know, sometimes they can win really good lanes and they can win it, they can stomp, but sometimes they can do really bad. And the same goes for everybody. That's our weakest point right now is lane phase. And then our strongest point is is when we're, we're together. And that doesn't matter who's on what role. When we're together, we all know what we all want to do. And that's really, really strong. And that's like the foundation of being a rank 5's team. That's just, right, if you all improve individually, you all get your lane phase better, where are you going to lose if your best part already is your, your team play? And that's kind of what we have like the confidence for. You know, We just have to improve as better players ourselves, and then we're going to be a really, really strong team. 
So the reason um, I thought I'd mention one thing uh, just quickly. You haven't seen Sunfire Cape right now. This is obviously the software Baron replay. And for some reason it hasn't shown up. But I have bought it just to kind of let you guys know. Now the weird thing that the enemy have done. Really weird thing. They have sent MF bot lane. Now she is very fed. And I have to be very careful. Now the only thing. Like, if she didn't have red buff. I would be jumping on her right now. The red buff is going to stop me. The red buff will be able to you know, let her kite around. And going to be really really annoying. Now the weird thing that we are like. Why are they doing that? Why are they sending a MF versus a Mundo? Now, yes, she does have the healing reduction, which is going to be annoying for me. But why are they sending their AD carry, the one that does a lot of damage? You know, you can see the red buff is doing the kiting mechanic that she's, you know, trying to do. But you can see, my team is just going to simply... Right, we need to fight. You know, their AD carry is bot lane. We have ours. Let's just go in and fight. Mundo has TP in the end of the day. I can still TP in. MF can't stop it. She can just get me fairly low before I can go. So I'm going to just think, right, I'm just going to go all in on you any second. And and the way I'm going to time it is my team is going to about to go in for a team fight. I know in that team fight, there is going to be a Soraka ultimate. So I'm going to go in. I know Soraka ult is going to come down without me even calling. Because here I go. There's a Soraka ult. Gets me back to full health. And just going to go in pure and simple for this MF. You're going to die, baby. And she even flashes to try and avoid a cleaver. Not good enough, I'm afraid, and I do pick up that kill. While my team win the team fight, as they probably obviously would, and I don't know why Gaming Gear kind of thought they would win that without their AD carry. You can see Fi is still full health. He was in the background just killing things, and I, as a Mundo, was able to kill the MF one-on-one. -on -one. And I'll, now that I have the red puff, there is no way that she'll be able to do that ever again. She'll just simply die straight away. So I'm going to go back and buy. We do probably, there we go, pick up the Baron. And this again will make me further in the lead. I have now picked up my Randuins, pick up a Cloth Armor that I'd imagine would be building into a Thorn Mail if this game goes long enough. So if you look into the Gold tab, um, in a, there we go. Now if we slow it down as well. Uh, my team is also picking up Dragon, so if we just wait for that to go down, uh, there we go. So now we can compare everybody at the team. So I'm at 11,000 gold, Renekton's at 8,500, so I have a very big lead on my lane opponent right now. Even though he has a slight CS lead, I have a kill lead, assist lead, uh, etc. Objective lead now. Jungle, the Shivana is still ahead because she did a very good job. She has kills herself, she has a lot of farm, so yeah, she's still ahead of Duffman. Mid lane, uh, Soraka has overtaken Orianna. Even though the lane went in Orianna's favour, you can see Orianna is 60 CS ahead. Uh, Soraka, with the global objectives, with the kills and assists, has picked up the gold lead by about 2,000, so really nice. And then AD carry, very close by the AD carries, you know, MF is ahead. Well, uh, Fi is ahead by about 400 gold, 3-400 gold. So, yeah, not a very big lead there, but it still is a lead. You know, we still are ahead in certain elements of this game. And then supports is a good one to see where objectives have kind of come into play. And we are ahead in support by about, you know, 800 gold. So I'm going to be in the top lane. And honestly, these guys can't kill me. I am a very confident Mundo right now. I'm, I'll be very surprised if they manage to kill me, even if they bring two people up here. I don't think they'd kill me very easily. So Renekton has decided to go back and buy. He's either going to come back to top lane or he's going to go join his team and they're just going to team fight straight when he gets there. But he does opt for coming to top lane. Now if you look into my boots as well, I thought I'd mention I have opted for distortion boots. This is because uh, I have teleport. So when I teleport in, I want a little bit of extra speed boost just to get into the fight. If I haven't got a perfect ward to teleport onto, I have to go a little bit of a distance, then yeah, I, I will use that ward to kind of just or use that speed up boost to get into the fight now they've sent Renekton against me and you know this is the guy that I'd say they only can send the well other than that I'd say they can send either Orianna if they just wanted to wave clear but that obviously misses out a lot of their team fight potential or they could potentially send Shivana. I think she's more of a threat than this Renekton right now because she has Blade of the Ruin King Blade of the Ruin King is a very good item versus Mundo as I'm a health monster and that's what Blade of the Ruin King counters it kills health and I am uh, yeah I'm a health monster so I'm going to apply as much pressure to this top lane. You can see the tower is really not doing much damage to me. And Renekton is half health. I'm going to go for the turret. But obviously having Sunfire Cape. All this Renekton really needs to do is stand next to me. Turret aggro on me straight away. And that will be a, a tower kitting me. But I'm going to I'm gonna get this tower. There's no doubt about it. This Renekton cannot hold me off. And I will probably try and even kill this Renekton at one stage. 
So, again, just pushing. Nice and simple. Don't need to panic. My team are in a good position. You know, they are looking for a, like, maybe a little team fight here and there. There comes Leona. They are going for the team fight. I do move over here just to see if I can get the teleport off. But the fight does disperse. Both sides kind of just go, nope. And the main reason, basically, is why we can't just flat out win a team fight is because a very big advantage of what we have is in the top lane. You know, I am ahead of my opponent by quite a bit, where their AD carry is more or less even to fight. But then, you know, Soraka versus Orianna, they still have a great Orianna team fight potential. She is very good in team fights, so they have to be careful. And then, yeah, the Shivana is ahead of the Zin. So in that 4v4, it's really close. But then if you bring, I'd say, the 5v4, the 5v5, I'd say the Mundo will tip over the bar because I am ahead of this Renekton by quite a bit. I force his ultimate out. That's a really nice win by me. And I'll probably even pop my ultimate just to kind of just rub it in his face that, oh, I'm full health again, are you? And I'm just going to get full health and maybe even look for a teleport or just look for this uh, in a turret. You know, we'll just have to see. There is a lot of minions also building in the mid. So my team have played this well, though. They haven't committed for a full team fight. They're not being, you know, silly in that respect. There's a good Oriana ult coming down. There's a flash from fight to get away. MF ult comes down. Really nice Leona ult from Vale there. And they are going to continue going for this fight. And they're winning it. So there we go. That's all they needed. You know, they couldn't go for a massive team fight. If that Oriana ball hit, like, four people or three people, they would have been in trouble. But simply because it only hit, I think, uh, Fi and he flashed out... They won the team fight really, really nicely and a great uh, Leona ult from Vale. He hit like two people square on the nose, stunning them. So really, really nice. So again, going to keep playing pressure on the top lane. Uh, maybe I'll back out now and then we're going to look for maybe objective or something along them lines. If I look into the gold tab, how much gold do I have? I nearly have 2,000 gold again. Fire's 2,500, so now he's got a lead on MF. Now he's going to start just pulling it away. You know, Now he's 729, doing really well for himself. And uh, Renekton has opted for jumping into, uh, you know, my domain. Get out of my lane, Renekton. And he does wander away. So even though, you know, I'm only at half health right now, he knows that I could be at full health in an instant. You know, I've still got the heal. A lot of people kind of forget, you know, I still got the heal. That will still heal me for about 500 because I've got also Spirit Vazage and I think it affects that. So there is the Thorn Mail. And, uh, you know, I, the reason why I'm kind of, bigging up Mundo right now is because I really do like the champion. I'm a massive fan of Mundo top. If you are a ranked fives team or if you're a top lane that's like, what do we normally lose on? We normally lose because we have a lead and we can't push the lead. Why can't we push the lead? Because we can't dive. Mundo is Mr. Dive. He will literally run into a tower, don't give any cares and survive because he pops his ultimate, pops the heal and just survive. Especially if you have a Soraka with you, you're not going to die. And that's a perfect team synergy right there of the Soraka with the Mundo. Um, now Baron is coming up in about 40 seconds. Dragon's coming up in 20. I'm going to push the top wave out again. My teleport's up, I'd say, in about a minute and a half. So I probably, I've probably communicated that to my team. Probably like, right, I've got TP in a minute and a half. Maybe you want to delay or I'm just going to stay in the top lane because that's where Baron, you know, will spawn. Just so I can be in the area. Now, I don't know where Renekton is, so they have to be fairly careful. They don't get just flat engaged out on four, uh, 5v4, but they're looking good. Um, now, I don't really know what our strategy is uh, in the upcoming moments. It's probably just to secure complete vision onto the Baron. Just like, right, we are having this Baron control. None for you. Now, Orianna, you can see her damage is fairly nice. That was just a Q hitting Veil there, I think. And he did uh, a decent amount to our tank, or one of our tanks. Obviously, we do have I th more or less three in this comp. Um, although um, Duffman will be doing quite a bit of damage. Now we go for the Baron. I'm going to tank it probably as much as I can, um, although I am actually going to be doing quite a bit of damage to it as well. And the enemy are moving in. So we just decide, right, we're just going to engage. Just flat out engage. MFO does come down. Renekton is in the background, but I'm just going to jump totally onto the MF. Really nice by Vale. I'm just going to go on over and kill her, and she does go down. And then we're going to continue for the rest of the team fight. Fi is fighting a number of them by himself, doing a really good job. Oriana does come down, but that won't be enough to pick him up. So I'm going to continue running, running, running. Sorry for that little freeze. Sometimes Baron replay on a past patch makes the replay go a bit odd, and that's kind of what's happened now. But we're gonna the final stages of the game are coming up, so we will continue. And Renekton should go down as he does fail the E. My probably Cleaver would have just gone straight into him, and that will probably uh, call that. So uh, Fire is actually legendary now. So going from a very poor lane phase that he didn't do very well, you know, the pair of them that they got focused really hard. He's turned it brilliantly. He's turned it that he's actually fed now. He's way ahead of his lane opponent. He's nearly caught up in CS, considering he was quite a bit down. And yeah, he played it really well. 
Uh, so if you look into the scores of this game, you know, Renekton 0 4 2 compared to me 7 2 5. Shivana uh, 4 5 5 and Duffman 1 4 11. So good assists on him, but the big difference there is CS. But although it's not making a massive impact now, mid lane 4 5 2 compared to 7 1 16. Big CS again, but Soraka with them 16 assists is going to be just taking in a lot of gold, helping the team really nicely. And then again in the bot lane 5 6 7 compared to 9 2 10 and 0 6 6 to 2 4 10. So I'm just going to be in the in the way. I'm just going to be like, right, you guys can either do Baron or whatever. I'm just going to go and kill them. I don't really care. So I'm just going to completely just get rid of them i'm gonna distract them my team could have still be doing ban right now but they don't really need to we're just gonna pick up some free kills here the enemy came a little bit too close and bam we get another kill five goes legendary again and we'll probably just return to do the baron so that gets rid of their big tanky renekton that can jump into all five of us so we don't really have a threat to someone to come into us i think even shivana just used the ultimate as she did so she can't even jump in as well so this will probably be a free baron honestly you know oriana is in the area I do just run at her really nice ultimate by Veil and she just does goes down instantly. Again, I'm just going to use myself as really annoying. Nami, for some reason, tries to go for a bubble. Well, I'm just going to try and just kill the MF by solo. Fire is going to jump over the wall and pick up the Shivana, hopefully by herself, although he has to be really careful. Nice culling. And that will be that. That is probably the game there, guys. That was Mundo top lane against Gaming Gear EU. And there is a surrender vote. And there is the victory for us. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Mundo is a great top laner that I really am passionate about. And that's it. So hopefully I will see you guys next time.